Okay, so we, I've generated a map layout here in ArcGIS Pro, and I would like to export it out so that we can work with it in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so first off, we want to we have to use a file to well, for, to, to share it. I want, we want to go to the Share tab and then Layout, and that'll open up this Export Layout menu. The file type needs to be something that maintains text and you know colors and paths and things. So we can't use a raster graphic. Um, an, one option would be AIX for Adobe um, Adobe Illustrator Exchange, but um, that requires using Adobe Creative Cloud, which we uh, uh, which we're not going to use in this class. So we're not going to use that. So we need to use either PDF or SVG. Um, so some type of again uh, vector graphic. So, um, SVGs work pretty good, but they may you may have issues if you have some rasters. What we're going to do is just simply export as a PDF, which maintains the layers. Um, a couple things to note: make sure that this output as image is not turned on, um, because we want to make sure we maintain all of our tax information. Um, other than that, everything should be okay. Let's just export it and see what happens. I'm going to put a two on the end there because I exported it once already. And sometimes this can take a little bit of time, especially if you have a fairly complex um, scene or with a lot of features. Okay, so this is an earlier version. Um, I'm going to not use that. We're going to go to File, Open. And then if we go to the folder that contains it, we should see that PDF there. Go open that up. Okay. And then I'm going to get rid of this other one. All right, cool. So next thing I'm going to do is view, and then I'm going to do a fit artboard to window. And move this over. All right. So I have the layers turned on already, so let's see what the layers look like here. So generally what I find is that the layer structure that comes out of something like Arc is very complicated um, because it's kind of like automatically generated. So you're not going to probably get like a really clean layer setup and that's especially true if you have um, you know, lots of features you know, in, the, in the extent there. So as you can see, it's, there's a lot of sub layers here. Um, these are like individual numbers, app units. If we go into this group, there are some different paths there. So for example, if I select this, this is Angola, um, the path or polygon that defines that feature. Um, so anyway, there's it's pretty complicated. So you, get some, you have to get used to working in that environment, um, but it generally does work. So I'm going to clear my selection. So our main focus here is to look at working with text. So let's um, see the best means to do that. All right. So first thing is if you wanted to select some text, this can sometimes be complicated if you've got a lot of overlapping features and clip paths and whatnot. So what we want to do is use this text tool and then click over a text object, and then that will allow us to edit it. If we click on the selection tool, it'll highlight that, and then we can do something with it. You know, so we could actually go into the type, change the font, change the font size. We could rotate it or scale it, move it, whatever. Um, so a lot of this is just going to come down to some some manual editing. Okay, so first thing I like to do is maybe remove some features that are not um, necessary. So, for example, there's some small, tr like some of the tributary, or I guess distributary branches of the Nile are labeled. So I don't feel like that's necessary, so I'm just going to remove it. I guess first thing, though, we need to save it. So I'm going to do a save as, and we're going to save this to an Illustrator file. So any changes we make are going to be on the copy. Okay. All right. So again, just to remove stuff, if you click on it with the text tool there, and then and then the selection tool, and click delete, we can get rid of features that we that we really don't need. Um, 
so that's the deleting. Um, let's look at just like universally changing all the fonts at once. So to do that, we can do a select all, and then we can go into type, and then font, and we can change all the fonts at once. Um, not really sure it would be great in this situation. Um, maybe we'll use, again, it's not super important for now. It's just an example. I think it's to, yes, to Homo by default. Let's use Myriad Pro. So you can see that changed all the fonts at once. And then you can also go in and change um, individual features by, by clicking on them. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about moving some stuff around. Um, so let's start off with that. So again, there's not really a right answer here, but you probably want to um, you know, just think about you know best placements and confusions and you know all the rules that we talked about in, in the lecture. Um, you know, the idea here is to like intentionally place stuff in the in the in the space, right? Um, like for example here, um, so so let's click on an example of a country name, and I might decide, oh, that's a pretty big country. Um, so let's change the size. Let's bump it up a little bit. Maybe we'll make it like 18. Stands out a little bit more. Um, you could also change like the font color or change the rotation. If I hover over this, you can see I can rotate it a bit. Right? So again, it's pretty simple manipulations. Um, let's look at a point symbol. So some of these we might decide we don't want to label. Others um, we just maybe want to move. One thing I'm noticing right now is that these labels are kind of hard to read with all of the grid lines. So we might find that it's easier to just remove them. So I'm clicking on this right now with the um, direct select and then I can click the whole thing. And if I do a select same by appearance, I think that's going to select all of those um, radical lines. Yep. And then if I hit delete, we should be able to just get rid of them. Yeah. So we have our outer margin there, but we don't have our radicals anymore, um, the lines, um, which I think in this case is better because we just got too much going on. So we got rid of that. Okay, um, again, we were going to look at maybe moving some cities around, like Cairo, for example. We might say it's maybe a little bit too in line there, so maybe I'll move it down a little to here. Um, Alexandria is kind of over the water and the land, so if I could click on that and maybe try to move it up to like this position, it's still not perfect, but that might actually be a little bit better. Um, there's definitely a need here to try to differentiate the city labels from the, the countries and I think the easiest way to do that is to just simply make the country labels a little bit bigger um, where we can. So I'm going to bump that up to 14 and uh, we can maybe like rotate it a bit. All right. Um, so there's really probably no point in you just watching me go through and make a bunch of changes. So what I'm going to do is cut the video here, and then I'll come back and I'll just show you kind of my end result and, and the decisions that I made. Okay, so I've spent about an hour going through and doing some editing on this original image. So again, the goal here was to try to improve the labeling. And obviously there's not really a right answer here. Um, it's just, you know, thinking about best practices and best ways to represent your, your data and, and the information that you're trying to provide. So this is the res result I came up with. Okay, so a couple of things to begin with. Um, then I decided to remove the lines um, for, the, for the graticules because 
it just created too much um you know, confusion with the uh, with the labels so i decided that that information wasn't necessary so i removed it um i also added a citation down here to the, on the bottom for the the data source um, i also decided just to go ahead and remove the river lines as that also just seemed like too much clutter for, for the map so i decided to focus predominantly on the ca the country boundary labels and then the and then the city labels. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of the decisions that I made here. So first off, in order to kind of differentiate types of things, I decided to mainly rely on color. So um, I ended up changing all the country labels to this kind of slightly off black color. So um, note that they're not italicized. Um, they're, they've got the serifs and whatnot so those are the country labels the city labels i decided to uh, make a little smaller and then um and then change to a red collar and then i ended up uh, obviously removing the the rivers and the associated labels but i did add some labels for the um adjacent you know ocean features you know the ocean bodies and seas and gulfs and whatnot um, okay, so let's talk about positioning. So first off, for this for the cities, again, the optimal location is generally to the upper right, but you also got to take other things into consideration. So for example, Alexandria made sense to be in the upper right. I moved it over slightly just so it, would, it wouldn't overlap with the uh, Arabian Peninsula and the ocean. But for Cairo, I felt this was a little too cramped if I put it in this area, so I ended up moving it down to the lower um, left, just uh, this, you know, because there was more space there, obviously. Um, <clears throat> you can see kind of some of the decisions that I made for some of the other um, countries, um, or sorry, cities. So, you know, upper right, upper right, lower right, upper, upper right, lower right. So I try to basically stick with the upper right unless it, it was just too cluttered and then I moved it to like the lower right or the upper left, for example. Okay, so that's that. I also didn't I also made the labels a little smaller and I didn't change the label size um, based on you know, the size of the city as I did with the points when we were designing the map. Uh, I just didn't feel like that was really necessary in this case, but you could have done that. Okay, so the aquatic labels that I added, um, note that they're in this kind of blue collar and they're also um, italicized. It's very common to italicize aquatic labels, ocean labels. Um, I added two labels for the Atlantic, probably wasn't necessary, but this has seemed very disconnected from the so larger area here, so I wanted to add that. Um, like even for the Indian Ocean, you could maybe have added two labels there. I just didn't think that was necessary. Um, okay, so those, those are pretty simple. I did change the size. So, you know, the ocean labels are generally bigger compared to the seas and whatnot. But a lot of that was just to fill the space. All right, and then um, looking at the actual, the labels for the, um, this, the countries, I tried to label along the longest axis. So that involved, you know, rotating some of the labels. Um, I also decided not to use a standard size. Um, there's lots of countries here and they vary in size, so it just didn't make sense to stick with one large size or one small size because for the large features, a small label wouldn't work and obviously you'd have the opposite issue for the smaller features. Um, note that when you do add labels for features, um, for aerial features and you generally want to make sure that you leave a bit of a gap between the feature boundary and the and the label itself. I try to do that in most situations here. Like this may be a bit cramped there. I might want to either decrease the size or some or move it a bit. So for example, we can move it down just slightly to try to minimize the overlap there. Um, um, and the sizes, again, are generally used to show quantitative differences. In this case, it's kind of the country size, whereas collars usually show 
nominal or categorical differences of cities versus uh, countries versus um, ancillary features. Um, I also labeled the Arabian Peninsula up here. I used an italic and I used a different font color than I did for the ocean features just to differentiate them. Um, another feature that I decided to do was to just use uh, leader lines. So obviously some of these uh, countries on the west coast of Africa and then obviously like Rwanda, um, those they were just too small to label. So options were to not label them or to um, actually have the label outside the extent. And I opted for the second option. So to make that association, I just added in these leader lines. I try to make the leader lines um, not stand out too much. So I instead of using like a really dark black collar, I used like a gray collar and I also made them partially opaque um, or partially transparent. So I thought that made sense. Um, so anyway, those are the um, these smaller country labels. Uh, this one actually um, refers to like this this boundary here and then some of these islands. So that's why there's two leader lines. Um, so anyway, I thought that worked out pr pretty well. Okay, um, what else is worth mentioning? I think that's uh, uh, basically it. I'm, again, you could go through here and try to um, make some slight adjustments, but it, this is obviously a pretty drastic improvement to this where there's just you know, obviously too much going on to really, to really read it. Um, Okay, so let's say that we're happy with this and we want to save it now as a map output. So to do that, um, we can, again, make sure our file is saved, and this is now an AI file. And then to actually share it with someone, assuming it's like a, an end product, let's, um, we'll do an export, save, um, export as, and then we can export it to like a raster graphic. So I'm just going to export to a PNG. Note that when you export from Adobe Illustrator, you have this Use Artboards option um, to make it basically crop it to the extent of the artboard. Um, so I'm going to click on that, and I'm just going to dump it on my desktop here. Okay, so here's the output here. We're going to open it up. Um, fill the screen up. So as you see, I think that looks pretty decent. Again, there's probably some typos or errors there. Um, so we need to review it some, but obviously that's a much better representation of the labels than um, was just directly out of ARC.